Welcome back guys to my channel, Ruven TV. Now if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and also share this video to your friends. Now before we will proceed to our discussion, uh, hi nga pala sa mga sadyante, my former students like uh, Johnny Gabutan, uh, Joey Cañete, and Mel Sabalia. So, kawai kawai po pala sa mga former students ko. So guys, today's lesson is about normal distribution, also known as Gaussian distribution. Quickly, normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution that describes data that clusters around the mean. By the way, a normal distribution is also known as bell-shaped distribution. You know why? Because it's like this. Uh, for example, uh, you have a population. Remember, sampling technique is necessary in gathering or considering your sample because insufficient sample from the population would not uh, would tend to give you a result that will never represent the population as a whole. So that's why the moment you increase your sample size, it would most likely resemble to the population, which uh, once graph in a histogram, it will resemble to a bell shape. No wonder it's called a bell shape distribution as well. So here we go guys, I'm going to show you a bell shape distribution and explain to you um, how things are compartmentalized in a bell shape distribution. So let's go. Okay, so this is our uh, the bell shape distribution that I had mentioned earlier. So more likely when you have larger or enough sample then once graph the histogram would resemble to something like this one that's why it's called uh, a bell shape distribution now you notice this is the center okay that is what we're referring to the center refers to the mean okay and then you notice there is here the first line and then the second the first line also on the other side now this one here refers this area here this one refers to the distribution of the data set that is above the mean one standard deviation above them that's why you have here positive one you have here the mu which refers to the population mean and then plus one standard deviation you have the sigma that's standard deviation it implies that whenever you have a distribution of data so once the score is located within this area it is approximately believed to be within one standard deviation above the mean but if you're referring to this part of the distribution below it means to say that uh, the data set is distributed one standard deviation below the mean no wonder you have mu minus one sigma this is actually one this is a typo error this is one okay let me just write that one here okay so you notice that in this case here you have 34% uh, approximately 34% above and 34 percent approximately below so if you sum up this together it is believed that approximately 68 percent of the data set is just distributed within one standard deviation above and below the mean so if we're talking about the entire data set or in a bell-shaped distribution 68 percent of your data is uh, is believed to be distributed within one standard deviation above the mean and below the mean okay that is its meaning so whenever you move further to two standard deviation above the mean and then two standard deviation below the mean approximately that is uh, that's where you will find your 94 95 percent of the data to be distributed okay so let me just show you what i am saying uh, going back to the, the, the picture that I have shared earlier okay so this is what I am telling you you notice you have here the center the mean and then until this far that is uh, two standard deviation above the mean and then this one below also is two standard deviation below the mean so in relation to z-score value which I already shared to you in the previous uh, video that whenever you reach this far, it is believed that the z-score of a given distribution or a particular score, it's more likely positive up until positive 2. Because that score is just found within 2 standard deviation above the mean. But if you are going to consider a score down here, then expect that you have a z-score of equivalent to negative. Technically, up until negative 2. Because 
if you reach till this far, it is understood that your Z score here or the score is um, less than the mean of around two standard deviation. Okay, so if you will put this together, this entire area here, according to the theory, it says that it is approximately 95% of your data. It, meaning to say, within 95% or within um, two standard deviation above and below the mean, it means to say, that's where you will encounter the 95% of your data set to be or believed to be spread. Okay? Approximately till this far, this is already 3 standard deviation above the mean and then 3 standard deviation below the mean. Which implies that when you have already the entire distribution here, approximately this is referring to the entire distribution, the entire normal distribution. So that's why you have here um, mean plus 3 standard deviation above and then mean plus uh, 3 standard deviation below. So, entirely, this entire distribution here is approximately would cover 99.7% of the distribution, which is basically 100%. That refers to the entire data set. Okay? So, that's it. It's the quickest uh, explanation I can share to you about Gaussian distribution. Now, the next video that I am going to uh, upload would be related on how we can convert normal distribution into standard normal distribution. So hang on there, there will be a part two for this video in which where I, I'm going to explain to you what is uh, how to convert normal distribution into standard normal distribution. Meanwhile guys, uh, that's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning with me and if you have some suggestions or questions, then leave it in the comment section. Thank you so much guys and have a great day.